Okay, in this video, we're going to try and show you how very quickly to pick up satellite images of the NOAA weather satellites, decode them uh, using one of these SDR uh, software defined radio USB uh, sticks. So, we're going to go through everything you need. We're going to go through building a very quick, very cheap homemade antenna, um, and then hopefully, you'll start being able to use the software to uh, pick up your own images. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've got everything now on the table that we need uh, to do this. Got a, um, obviously the software defined radio. This here is the R8, <laughs> R820T2. Uh, but I'm pretty sure most software defined radios will work. Uh, we've then got, the only odd thing about this is it takes a uh, small, oops, I was trying to get to focus with my cap. Uh, it uses smart focus. That's it. it uses a small uh, is it MCX MXC MCX uh, connector, uh, which is really tricky to uh, to kind of find anything that will uh, fit in there. So the only thing that I have bought on top of that is one of these converters. So um, it's the MCX uh, plug uh, fitted to a Mayo standard IO. I forgot the name of that. I'll put it on the screen now. Uh, adapter, which is then com compatible with most antennas, but like I say, we're going to build our own anyway. So, okay, so we've got the radio, we've got the adapter, and then we need to build an antenna. So to build an antenna, we need two pieces of copper or aluminium wire. Uh, I, I could have gone out and bought some, but I wanted to get going with this as quick as possible. So I had some of this very, very uh, thick uh, copper uh, electrical cabling in, I stripped out the centre core and I've just used uh, two lengths of that for the uh, for the actual dipoles uh, for the antenna legs uh, and then to put those together I've just used one of these or a couple of these standard connectors uh, to actually fit the fit the lot together. So first thing is we're going to build our antenna because we're not going to be able to do anything if we don't have an antenna to actually pick up the signal. Okay, here we go. Okay so here's our antenna um, what we did is these legs from the end of the wire, from the end of the wire up until where that wire meets the connector should in theory be 53.4 millimetres. I'm nowhere near as accurate as that. All I did was I took a long length of copper wire, bigger than 53.4, uh, built all this up literally as we're seeing it now and then measured from there as best I could to the end and snipped it as close to 53.4 as I could. Just to show how this antenna goes together, just get a bit windy, um, basically you've got two pieces of copper wire, there's a 120 degrees uh, gap between them or angle between them, so that should be the angle, um, and they're both coming down to this connecting block, and you can see there that I've stripped back the coaxial wire, coax wire, and I've literally got the surround shield go into one leg and the centre core go into the other leg and that's coming back down to my standard PL connector uh, and that is literally as simple as the antenna is it's facing south but ultimately yes that's facing south okay so this is my antenna coming back into my house this is terminating on a PL259 standard connector basically like that so obviously I'm going to connect the uh, little adapter that I said we'd made. Of course, in theory, if you could terminate that into an MCX connector, fantastic. And then we're ready to fit that into our software defined radio. Okay, so now the antenna's done, that's the, that's the difficult bit. The rest of it's all indoors and getting this thing working. Okay, there's two pieces of software that you need uh, to, to get this running. The first one is SDR Sharp. Uh, and there's lots of tutorials out there how to get SDR Sharp running for software defined radios. Um, so I would encourage you to go and look at one of those because there's quite a lot in it depending on what software defined radio you've got and what drivers you need. But ultimately you need to be able to select the driver there. And you need, mine's not plugged in at the moment by the way, but you need to be able to select the source. And then I would use something that came with it like the standard antenna and I'd tune it into your favourite local radio station and just double check that you are actually receiving a signal and you can hear audio through your uh, laptop speakers. Okay, so that's the first piece of software. Next piece of software is WXTOLMG. 
Um, and again, this is free, just like SDR Sharp is. Uh, when you open it, this is the actual thing that actually uh, decodes your satellite image. So the first thing you need to do when you load this up is go on File, and you need to update the Keplers. And then once that is updated, which mine is done, yours might take a little bit longer, you go on File and you go on Satellite Pass List. So this is super cool because it tells you the next pass lists for each of the satellites. So tomorrow you can see there's one more pass today of NOAA 18 and then to, there's all tomorrow's passes uh, where I'm located. Okay. Okay, so then the final thing you need to do, and this is the hardest, this is going to be the hardest step, is you need to be able to stream the audio between the two pieces of software, between this piece of software, SDR Sharp, and between the piece of software that's actually going to accept that audio file. Um, and there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first is the free and easy way, and the one that I was lucky enough to be able to use. Um, so if you open up your device sound settings, sorry, doing this one-handed, so device sound settings, so recording devices, and if you are lucky enough to have your stereo mixer in there, you can turn on the stereo mixer, make it your default device, and then go up to file, and mix control and record, and select your audio from there, from the stereo mixer. And that will then mean that any sound data that comes in through SDR Sharp gets sent straight through to X, uh, WXT OLMG. So that is the easy and cheap way of doing it. I, I don't fully understand the ins and outs of it, and I'm gonna be honest, this is where you might have to do a little bit of research, but I believe Windows stopped doing this as standard, having the stereo mixer. And I know on this computer, um, it was hidden. And I had to bizarrely add some uh, register information to get it back again. Uh, and then it came back without a problem. So it is there on most computers. If, however, you can't get the stereo mixer working for your computer, and I couldn't possibly go into all the different ways that you do that for all the different models of computer, so you'll have to research that yourself. But if you cannot get that working, the other option is to use virtual audio cable. I've not used this, but I do know that other people have used it successfully. I also believe it is not free, uh, and I think it costs a few pounds, maybe three, four, five pounds, uh, but virtual audio cable would allow you to do the same thing. So I believe once you've installed virtual audio cable, that will basically you select from your SDR Sharp, you select where the sound's coming in, um, select the virtual audio cable to pipe it over to the other piece of software. I appreciate I said that this was a full video. The software is going to be slightly different on each computer, but ultimately now you need to download the two pieces of software, SDR Sharp and this one, WXTOLMG. You need to either buy virtual audio cable or enable the stereo mixer. And then once you've got that, you need to look at a few tutorials for SDR Sharp, download your drivers for your um, software defined radio, and just check basically on an FM channel, for example, that your software defined radio is working. Then you can go on to plugging in your new antenna that you've made and, um, and obviously downloading one of the satellite images. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so when you're ready, you go to file and then record. Record here, sir. And then you go to auto record. And what that does then is it says, it gives you the status and it says you're here, it's waiting for NOAA 15 and that it's due in 27 and the time now is 23. So it's due in a few minutes and it will automatically start recording. So one of your first tests is when you know a satellite's coming. So I know there's one due in two minutes. I've got it tuned into 13762. Uh, 137620 and you can see there that there's no signal being received. So I'm going to turn the camera off now but hopefully in a few minutes when it starts to approach we should see uh, a signal start to appear. Okay so we're now at 620, 527 and you can see now that there's a signal starting to appear. So this is a great first, uh, first trial. 
just being able to see that the signals are uh, appearing. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna gradually get faster uh, and sorry, greater, stronger and stronger that signal. Okay, the image processing software knows that that signal is not strong enough yet, even though you can see in the background just underneath that it's got clearer and clearer. So you'll see it will automatically turn it on when it knows the signal is strong. Okay, you can hear the signals getting stronger and stronger. So the satellite's coming in more direct, uh, directly overhead now. And hopefully that image should start uh, improving in quality. So downloading live images of Earth on the NOAA 15 satellite from my homemade antenna. <laughs>